that bedding heard? Exactly. <laughs> I've got surprisingly small ears. <laughs> I've also got a top knot and a beard, um, but I'm not actually cool. <laughs> or German, like the other guy. <laughs> In fact, I'm from um, just south of London. Sorry. Um, <laughs> which, which used to be in the UK. <laughs> and which explains my dull barrel surname and slightly annoyingly posh accent. <laughs> but, unlike many of my English peers, and I do have friends called peers, <laughs> um, I voted to remain. why people voted to leave. Um, I, for one, wanted to stay in the EU because I like shopping at Aldi. <laughs> and my Facebook feed told me to do so. <laughs> so, I arrived in Edinburgh, cold, rainy, windy Scotland, um, in September, clean-shaven, nicely cut hair, with hope. <laughs> vanished. <laughs> I hope for a better world, that is, um, and the grooming. <laughs> so I'm just left with this, um, which is mainly there for warmth, really. <laughs> so that's me uh, scrutinising myself, and I guess what I do is um, scrutinise other selves. Um, in particular, I, I'm interested in why people want to or try to conserve wildlife, and why people don't. So in that regard, I'm a PhD student in conservation, which means, <laughs> uh, which basically means I, I save the world on a daily basis. <laughs> um, but I don't like the word conservation. I think it's quite backward looking. Unlike other fields which are focused on progression, advancements in technology, society, knowledge, conservation looks backwards. It wants to revert to uh, a different, a, a past, an arbitrary point in the past, like a snapshot of a better world. It's like voting Brexit because you want the empire back. <laughs> or the 1966 World Cup winning football team. <laughs> you could probably still be Iceland. <laughs> so I don't like the, uh, the word conservation, but I like the term, the field of conservation. It's quite apt. <laughs> what we do quite a lot is walk around fields. <laughs> and what conservation effectively is, it's a discipline which appropriates the methods of real subjects, <laughs> such as economics and psychology, without really knowing what they mean. <laughs> so I can write a review, I can say big words like panacea, um, which, by the way, it's not a type of cheese, as I initially thought. <laughs> I, I also know that Wonderpus photogenicus is a species of octopus, and not just a really good-looking cat. <laughs> but besides that, I, like many conservationists with an education in zoology, don't really know much. <laughs> I'm not even qualified to work in a zoo. <laughs> Which makes it quite hard to understand people. Primarily, it seems, because people don't fit easily into quadrats. <laughs> people also, unlike many other animals, don't, aren't solely um, focused, it seems, on copulating with everything around them. <laughs> Although, if you go to Weatherspoons on a Friday night, you may seem to think otherwise. Which I would really recommend doing, by the way. Take, take some binoculars, a field guide, maybe a notebook, sit back and watch the courtship at play. <laughs> Particularly between the hens and the stags. <laughs> so, yes, conservation, we don't actually know much. Um, in particular, we don't know much about people, so it's hard to understand people. In fact, 
At heart, what we really are, are Victorian naturalists, born two centuries too late, without any money, <laughs> and hopefully slightly more progressive political views. <laughs> but conservation's come on since then. Conservation's now, it's about people. It's about development. It's about sustainable development. It's about poverty allevi alleviation and zebras. It's about, <laughs> about win-win, trade-offs. It's about community conservation, going back to our roots when everyone coexisted happily with wildlife. A bit like the Flintstones. <laughs> but I, I, still, I still suggest that perhaps there's a tendency for conservationists to overlook people. None more so when thinking about conflicts in conservation. So at the moment in the literature, a lot of people look at conflicts about conservation and see them in terms of human-wildlife conflict. So maybe uh, Maasai pastoralists in conflict with the lions that eat their cattle. Now there's a problem there. The problem being is, by definition, a conflict requires two conscious antagonists. Yeah. Now, are you really telling me that the elephants across the East African savanna are mobilizing in an attempt to <laughs> regain lands taken from them in the Berlin Conference and the subsequent scramble for Africa? <laughs> are you really telling me crocodiles around the world are coming together in solidarity for their cousins who historically have been marginalized on the West Bank <laughs> or the Nile? <laughs> are you telling me that the real borders of the UK are disenfranchised with metropolitan elites and undemocratic elected officials in Brussels? <laughs> are they are you ri rallying up against the untapped migration of cuckoos from beyond the Eurozone who come here, take their homes and steal their children's benefits? <laughs> it's, it's funny because cuckoos are brood parasites. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling me that the, the lions of Zimbabwe are rallying together to shut out um, American dentists <laughs> by building a wall built by American dentists? Are you telling me the wildebeest want to make the Serengeti great again? <laughs> I don't think so. It's conservationists that want to make their perceived Serengeti great again. And whether that's right or wrong is not for me to say, and would be better said by a human geographer who actually understands the terms discourse, social construct, and paternalistic neocolonialism. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but what I can suggest is like me, maybe conservationists have been confused. Maybe they've looked at the news and they've, they've conflated gorilla, gorilla warfare being resistant fighters with actual gorillas <laughs> throwing rocks in the jungle at Tarzan's real parents. <laughs> this confusion may not be helped by the appearance of, of two popular fictional apes who have surprisingly similar names to the Viet Cong. <laughs> Nintendo fan. <laughs> so what I do in my, my research is I look at these sort of, well basically I look at people. Not in a pervy way. <laughs> I only do that weather spoons. <laughs> I look at the human human dimensions of conservation conflicts and try and get a better understanding of what's going on. And um, I'm going to be basing my research in, in northern Tanzania. Now you may ask, if I don't understand um, the political views of somebody, someone from Henley on Thames, how on earth am I going to understand or even speak to the Maasai? And you're, you're completely right. The opposite a Maasai student from the University of Dar es Salaam coming to the UK and with a fancy petition and translator to talk to Grousey McGrousface and Henry Henharry and I can't understand why they don't get along. <laughs> it's completely absurd. But there's an important justification why it's absolutely fine that I'm going to be doing my research in Tanzania. It's a lot warmer than Scotland. <laughs> so I can ditch the beard. Thanks very much. <laughs>